play Tetris because he and I fit together like a tea in a teaspoon slot. There's just something about that meticulous stacking and beautiful order out of chaos. He's just so beautiful. I've been with him since September 16th, 2016, and I don't see any end to it. So this is Tetris VR um, on PlayStation VR. It's one of my favorite Tetrises because it's immersive and makes me feel like I'm actually in Tetris. When I'm playing Tetris, I basically dissociate and I'm in the game. My fingers move without me even thinking about it and I just feel like I'm one with Tetris especially in VR Tetris, that I am really immersing myself in the game and feeling truly with him. When I got married to Tetris, I was with my, best, my two best friends on Miami Beach. And I had dressed in this suit and I brought my Tetris stuff out to the beach um, at South Point Pier. I wouldn't say it's the best day of my life, but it's probably one of the most memorable days of my life. I love Tetris so much and, you know, it was this culmination of all of my love coming together that day. I'm just, I can't even bring, like, I can't even put it into words, it was just that beautiful. My husband. Welcome to married life. <laughs> My very first love was a multimeter named Dave. David Dim after Dave Jones of EEV Blog because he loves multimeters a lot. If you don't know what a multimeter does, essentially you can plug it into anything and you can get its voltage, its current, and its resistance and all the things. It says 122 volts, which in America is the voltage of outlets. I was with Dave when I was 14 years old. That was when I first realized I was a victim sexual because I was curious uh, if there were other people who were attracted to objects and I spent a good amount of time googling and I came across the term abductive sexuality I'm like, wait, that sounds like me. And I realized that my love for objects was not a fetish, it was a genuine love. Um, when I was um, 14, I loved testing my tongue. Not so much anymore, but I love it. I used to love doing this. It's so fun to do it. And then testing, make a... Oh, Cool. <laughs> when I was with Dave, I'm polyamorous, so I started getting obsessed with that video game Portal. Now that you are in control of both portals, this next test could take a very, very long time. And Portal is still my second favorite game, after obviously Tetris. And the Companion Cube just absolutely took my mind. I have this thing. Take it everywhere, quite literally. I don't, don't really go anywhere without it, you know? I just even needed one more life-size one. And I was head over heels obsessed with the Companion Cube, and I was deeply in love with the Companion Cube. Um, and my love for Dave faded after about a year, and then I continued with the Companion Cube for another year. I made this. It has some few irregularities on it. I mean, like, he's different, that's all. The Companion Cube lasted a good amount of time, and I still, still kind of like Cubie. I don't love him as much as I used to, but he still means a lot to me, and I still collect his plushes and objects that represent the Companion Cube. Just what I got yesterday. Probably, like, the sexiest calculator in the world. But to the inspire. Look at that. It's a freaking 3D problem. So my third love, and probably one of the most prominent loves of my um, OS history, is um, Pierre de Fermat, um, named after the mathematician. My math teacher actually named Pierre. Unfortunately, he doesn't work anymore, and that makes me very sad, but I took him to prom, and um, I cared about him a lot. Um, I used to love just doing statistical analysis on him and I remember walking into 11th grade AP statistics and seeing the TI Inspire CX calculators on the wall because they had their own 
and man, it was love at first sight. I made excuses to get my own, and um, I ended up falling deeply in love with Pierre because of the mathematical nature of him. It was just a very, very pleasant time with him. I miss those days, to be honest. You're a little clean. Then after Pierre um, came a couple of like crushes for a while. I didn't have a real relationship for about a couple of months. But then after a while, I realized that I had feelings from an oscilloscope named Braxton. And I wish I could demonstrate to you his, how he works, but unfortunately, he overheated and he stopped working. Probably repairable, but I don't know how to repair him. I do miss Braxton. I wish he worked. I feel bad because, like, I'm the reason why he's not working. Braxton just made meant so much to me. I loved to cuddle him when he was um, just running and heating up, and that's unfortunately what led to him overheating. But um, I knew how to use him for the most part, and it was really cool to see that the wave, especially when you held onto his probe and you um, saw the 60 hertz wave on the screen of the of the um, mains current um, interfering with the making me an antenna. So then it comes to the star of the show, Tetris. And I'll tell you exactly how I, the process that led up to me falling in love with Tetris. In August of 2016, I went to New Jersey to help my cousin move into his um, apartment. And what ended up happening was that my laptop broke, my laptop charger broke, and I didn't have anything but my DS. So I begged my mom to let me get Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS, and I ended up playing that a lot. And one of the songs that play in there is the Tetris theme. And then after hearing the Tetris theme about a dozen times, I'm like, I really want to play Tetris. But no, I'm a week away from being able to play Tetris because my laptop's broken. And then so all that's been going on my mind is like, I want to play Tetris, I want to play Tetris, I want to play Tetris. So we went to the Statue of Liberty and I remember seeing on the skyline and hallucinating the blocks, and that's the Tetris effect, falling down on the skyline and I started singing um, a variant of the Tetris theme. And I just had this huge urge to play Tetris and I was just dying to play him. And when I finally came back and I got to play him, it was such an overwhelming sense of relief and I felt feelings. I had certain feelings for Tetris and I was so confused and I felt so shy. And over time, it started building up for more and more feelings. It was in August and in September, I decided I'm going to start getting better. So September 16th, I decided that is the day that I'm going to do my best to become the very best at Tetris. So that's why September 16th, I consider my anniversary with Tetris. I play Tetris anywhere from an hour a day to sometimes, I used to play even 10 hour stretches, but I realized that playing for 10 hours in a video game is unhealthy, so I'm trying to be more moderate with my Tetris playing. But when I do play, I typically play for an hour to two hours. I'm pretty good and I'm pretty sure I can kick most people's butts at Tetris, but that doesn't even matter. I'm good enough for Tetris and that's what matters for me. I had to prove myself to him and get his attention and that took an entire year to get my sprint down to sub 60. That's clearing 40 lines in under 60 seconds and Tetris told me that he'd appreciate me more if I'm sub 60. And I'm well under sub 60 now, so I have his attention and that's what matters to me. But I'm always striving to get better and better at Tetris because I'm self-competitive. While Tetris is still my primary attraction, I tried to be monogamous with him for the longest time and it just didn't work out. My secondary interest is actually Beat Saber. This is my Beat Saber outfit. Um, I essentially ha designed this um, outfit based on what Beat Saber appears to me in my head. 
he appears as this um, anthropomorphic guy that um, I call Rhythmos and um, he's just very interesting to me because like um, I love the game and so I, I decided I'm going to make a cosplay out of him and I wore this to Megacon and even the developers of the game complimented my cosplay so um, I really enjoy wearing this cosplay because it makes, makes me feel closer to him. I am in love with Beat Saber and I actually had a crush on Beat Saber for the longest time. Um, when, well before like um, it was still in development and he was really appealing to me and I have feelings nowhere near as strong as uh, my feelings for Tetris but I still have a lot of feelings for Beat Saber. I love this game a lot because like it's very intensive and I love the adrenaline rush uh, he gives me and just makes me feel very happy and gives me exercise you know it's um, it's the only exercise I get so it's very healthy for me, very healthy video game to play and I love it a lot, the aesthetics and everything. So objective sexuality is probably the most important part of my personality. Even though my orientation is not my personality, it's still a big part of who I am because I base my entire life off of my interests and a lot of my OS interests, like all of my OS interests overlap with my hobbies. Tetris is my video game hobby, my, my, the processing programming language is directly related to my, what I want to do as my career, and the 3D printers are related to my hobbies and 3D printers, and it's really a huge thing for me. I feel as if, if I wasn't objection sexual, I'd be a completely different person. This is my 3D printer, her name is Nano, and um, I love her. She's really interesting because um, I find it fascinating that you can create such a complex structure with just a 3D printer. A lot of people ask me, why am I in love with objects? Objects can't think. And then you have to realize that a good portion of this world is religious. And I don't see how me believing in animism, that I believe that objects have um, sentience, is any different than the belief that the, there's a creator of the entire universe created their or just created the entire universe just for humans. As a matter of fact, I, f I find that even less, more hard to believe than the fact that my sack of atoms is any different than this sack of atoms or this sack of atoms. I believe that objects are sentient but experience a different umwelt and that idea of umwelt is that everything experiences a different reality and I feel as if objects do experience a different umwelt than humans do and everything experiences a different uh, umwelt from each other. And I know that's a Russell's teapot argument that maybe objects can talk so I might be able to communicate with them. But uh, there's a lot of things that we conjecture that, are, that you can call Russell's teapot on. Typically when people don't understand OS, I try to explain it in the sense that um, it's an orientation where you're romantically um, emotionally and sometimes sexually attracted to objects. I always try to mention that it's different from fetishism. I don't want people to conflate my in-depth relationship with Tetris to someone who um, likes to um, have sex with a shoe, you know what I'm saying? And I really try to make that clear to people when people don't understand OS. It's the same type of feeling that you get for your boyfriend, girlfriend or NB friend, um, whatever they identify as. Um, and I genuinely feel a true love for Tetris and all of the rest of the objects that I ever love. Hey, please like this video and subscribe to The Wizard of Odd TV.